if there's an infinite amount of numbers from zero to one, but also an infinite amount of numbers from zero to two, isn't that infinite amount of numbers larger? This is a very common misconception about the concept of infinity, and there are two reasons for this. The first one is that he is thinking about infinity and working with infinity as if it was a number, but infinity is not a number. Let's listen to what he says. But then how is it larger if it's infinite? How are they both infinite, but one of them is larger? Like, isn't one of them technically doubled? And there it is. He's using infinity as if it was just another number, like 7 and 14, like 14 is double the amount of 7. But we cannot work with infinity as we do with other numbers, because infinity is just a concept. What is the definition of infinity? So what is the definition of infinity? We need a mathematical definition so that we can say something meaningful about infinity. We say that a set of elements, a collection of elements, is infinite if the number of elements in the collection is larger than any finite quantity. So you see, infinite is not a number. It's the opposite of being finite. But now the question is, if we have two sets that are infinite, how do we know if they have the same type of infinity number of elements? But it has to be because it has to be double because two is larger than one, allegedly. So then how is zero to two infinite larger than zero to one infinite, but it's still infinite? How do we compare the number of elements in a set even when these sets are finite? Let's compare the number of bananas to apples. Typically what we would do is just count. There is one, two, three bananas and one, two, three apples. But this would not work when the sets are infinite because we are not going to be able to count all the elements in an infinite set. So instead we can do something slightly different which is the following. We're going to introduce another set. We have the set of bananas, the set of apples, and then a set with three numbers, the numbers one, two, three. And then we can see that there is a correspondence between bananas and the numbers one, two, three, and the correspondence between apples and the numbers one, two, three. And all three sets have the same number of elements, three. But then we can cut out the middleman of the numbers of the counting and then just establish a correspondence between bananas and apples. That banana corresponds to that apple, this one to that one, and this one to that one. And since each banana here corresponds to one apple here and every apple here comes from one banana, we say they have the same number of elements. And now this is what actually works to compare infinite sets. We're going to establish a correspondence between the numbers between zero and one and the numbers between zero and two by sending x to 2x. So 0.4 goes to 0.8 and 0.8 goes to 1.6 and 0.5 would go to 1 and 2 would come from 1. And now because this correspondence sends every element in here to exactly 1 in here and every element between 0 and 2 comes exactly from 1 in here, every y here comes from y divided by 2, then we say they have exactly the same number of elements. And since they are both infinite, we say they have the same type of infinity. And finally, if you want to see the proof that the function that goes from 0, 1 to 0, 2 that sends x to 2x is a bijection, and therefore two, the two sets have the same cardinality and the same type of infinity, uh, this is the proof that the function is a bijection.